This is my idea of one of those ice baths that seem to be so popular. Last year, I committed to immersing myself in water every month of the year, regardless of the weather or temperature. I would travel to some awesome places and experience a wide spectrum of temperatures. Not exactly ideal swimming weather, yet here we are. This year-long project would have some simple rules. It has to be a new location each month and no swimming pools. So any lake, creek, river, swamp, ocean will work. Well, almost any place will work. And what did I hope to get out of all this? To act less like this and more like this. To break out of my comfort zone. To be present. So without further ado, here we go. April. It marks the first full month of spring. I could have picked a lukewarm lake, but decided I'd ratchet up the challenge by finding a mountain stream. It may be spring down in the valley, but the mountains haven't gotten that memo yet, and the water is cold. Ah. Oh dear God. Ah. At this okay. point, I'm thinking about the people in those videos. You know, the ones who plop into an ice bath and somehow maintain a zen-like expression. And here I am, struggling to find the courage to submerge. Uh. Cold water is painful, something I typically avoid. But after dealing with the initial shock, something noticeable and positive actually seemed to happen in that frigid water. I felt myself giving in, actually relaxing. I dropped the mental baggage I'd brought with me, which freed me up to contemplate the here and now. I felt alive but strained to share an intelligent comment about the experience. One month down, 11 to go. It was not comfortable. This challenge isn't just about cold water. It's about the healing powers of water in general. It's about being present. And what better excuse than in order to give the people I love more of me. Lots of childhood memories were made here, and here I am making new ones with my daughter. I often find myself distracted from her as the siren call of work and obligation pulls me in other directions. But right now, I'm all in, sharing her joy in this beautiful setting with its Spartina speckled marshes and antebellum churches. Live oaks dripping with Spanish moss and views of estuaries teeming with life. And of course, that ever-present metronome the rhythmic, soothing waves reminding me to slow down that today, if only for a day, we're on beach time. It's easy to take things for granted. Not this place, though. A mere two hours drive from my home, the Great Smoky Mountains is my go-to weekend hiking spot a place to disconnect from stress and reconnect with the flow of nature. Yeah. 
So much history resides in these woods. And natural beauty. It's a special place that protects one of the most diverse ecosystems in North America. High ridges collect rain, which coalesces into creeks. Those creeks merge into rivers that run year-round, creating innumerable swimming holes. Got a good swimming hole. I'm grateful for the serenity I find here and for the individuals whose path I won't cross yet remain indebted to. The ones who recognize the ecological value here and gave a voice to a threatened place that would become my favorite national park. My sister's family often escapes the big city life for a weekend on the water. Active days transition into evening relaxation and mornings filled with long duration sunrises. After years of private school tuition and country club bills, my sister's family realized they weren't living their dream, but were chasing someone else's. They sold their house, said their goodbyes, and relocated to South America for a year. It was a bold move that created a priceless new perspective on the type of life they wanted to create for their family. They're back in the U.S. now, living a simpler life and following their dreams. Pursuing not so much a perfect life, but one that works for them with an emphasis on love, laughter, and authenticity. It's the height of summer, and the lakes near my home are bathtub warm. But I'm 2,000 miles from home in Montana. Most of our trips out here are us doing this very thing, hiking in this subalpine and alpine environment, going up and over passes and swimming in cold mountain lakes. Most of the lakes and creeks here were iced over a few weeks ago, but the intense summer sun at this elevation warms things up quickly. Not to say that 52 degree water is warm. Back home, it seems like our days run on a never ending cycle. Eat, work, sleep, repeat. So my friends and I break the pattern by spending a week in the wilderness. The scenery is therapeutic we embrace the magic of the mountains and the spiritually cleansing power of the waters that course through the landscape. It's a welcomed reset, one that recharges each of us. These trips always end too soon, but when we return to reality, we're better equipped to handle the unrelenting demands of life. When your family is as big as mine, it's challenging to get everyone together, but we recently made it happen. It's the off season here. As the trickle of tourists slows, our family arrives to soak up the rays of late summer and to reconnect with one another. I convinced the entire family to join me in the chilly water. Although some of us are less graceful than others. It's not bad. It's, it's, it, when it... Get in, just get in. 
We lead chaotic lives, and each member of our family is confronted by a unique set of challenges. But reuniting strengthens us. Okay, when can I be done? I'm not done now. There's no guarantee when or if our family can get together again. <laughs> Y'all are so cheesy. So I cherish this trip and the finite moments shared with the people I love. Adventure has always been vital to my well-being. For years, I was content to hike and explore by myself. But I found someone to share it with. Exploring landscapes is my favorite pastime, and experiencing this unique realm of arches, ridges, and streams is enriched by having someone by my side. I've been here before, but experiencing it with someone else feels like seeing it for the very first time. I'll take adventure any way I can get it, but like so many things in life, it is so much better when shared. The weather has changed. Gone are the warm waters of summer and early fall. We're looking for a landmark called Devil's Bathtub and mistakenly jump into the wrong swimming hole. The next morning, we discover the right one. Despite the air temp hovering in the high 30s and the sun not yet reaching us, we fight the temptation to hike out. We take the plunge. Cold water immersion hurts, and doing it in the morning without the benefit of the sun is something I didn't think I was mentally capable of doing. This challenge is expanding my limits. Enduring cold water is not only getting easier, it's something I'm actually starting to look forward to. We've traveled south to look for something old. Really old. And we find it. A set of 113 million year old preserved footprints of a theropod. And the much larger sauropod that once roamed these lands. Water is the force responsible for preserving these tracks and in revealing them eons later, granting us a glimpse into a distant past. And that lesson in perspective is not lost on us as we pass through an environment where dinosaurs once ruled for over a hundred million years. It would seem that we humans are just getting started. The month I've feared most is here, and to make it really count, I've timed the swim with an Arctic blast that has ushered in the coldest weather of the season. It's mid-January. Air temperature of 9 degrees Fahrenheit, with a high of around 20 today. 
dusting of snow on the ground, ice on the pond. A good day to go swimming? Probably not. We've got an out of session camp to ourselves and plan our swim in a lake at the heart of the property. Oh my God. I almost started climbing back out. Here goes. Yeah, baby! Whoa! Whoa! I'm, okay, I'm gonna jump in. Okay, okay. No endurance records were broken, no style points earned, but I achieved something I'd been training for and was proud. January was the hardest month so far, but I couldn't have known what lurked around the corner. Water defines landscapes. Few places illustrate this force better than southern Utah where periodic floods scour the land, carving deep canyons. So this week, Candace and I are hiking in Buckskin Gulch in southern Utah. It's the longest slot canyon in the country and potentially in the world. We had planned to encounter shin deep water, but the knee deep and eventually chest deep water caught us by surprise. I made several attempts to break trail through the deepest part. After spending several minutes in this unintentional ice bath, I lost feeling in my extremities. Pain progressed to numbness then to hypothermia. Another trip into the icy water could have been deadly. All right, we got into some chest deep water and I can't even keep this thing still. Okay, I'll hold it, I'll hold it. We made the prudent decision to turn around and hike out. A few months after our trip, two men were swept to their death in a flash flood in this very canyon. Water creates it also has the power to destroy. For the final month, I'm traveling north to visit another one of my sisters. General Washington's troops camped and trained here over the winter of 1777. It's a place steeped in history whose events shaped a burgeoning nation. And a river flows through it. This is the 12th month of my year-long journey. Although those who have come to witness the spectacle don't seem too impressed. After swimming, we tour the park and I'm reminded of the struggles endured here, of those who fought and those who continue to fight to uphold our rights to life and liberty. Even if that liberty is manifested as something so trivial as willfully plunging into cold water. I traveled extensively during this project, visiting a mix of locations, some that I know well, and others that I experienced for the first time. This experiment confirmed some things I knew, that water is medicinal. It subdues anxiety, 
resets the body, quiets the mind. It cleans and rejuvenates. It baptizes. I was reminded that being on the water, or even just near it, is enough to confer benefits. But for the most impactful experience, it helps to be in it. Immersion into water of any temperature forces you to focus on the present. It displaces negative thoughts and drowns out the noise. I found that the most physically refreshing temperature occurred in the mid 80s to low 60s Fahrenheit range. But for the most pronounced mental benefits, the colder the water, the better. As if the willingness to push past the discomfort strengthens the mind. Oh boy. The locations featured here weren't the only places I visited. I took walks along shoals and into floodplains, forded streams, and soaked in creeks, lakes, natural springs, and ponds. In these waters, I paddled, fished, drank, bathed, frolicked, got the whole family in, and was born anew. This project is not just about cold water plunges, it's a tribute to the outdoors and to pushing myself into unfamiliar territory. It's a reminder that I must challenge myself, put myself out there, avoid complacency, and embrace change. One year after starting, the project was over. No more would I have to schedule an entire day around water or deliberately contend with plunges, cold or otherwise. But if this project is an analog for anything, it is this. In order to grow in any facet of life, we can never remain comfortable. <laughs>